Are you okay? Can you hear me? I didn't hear a peep from your room, and it really freaked me out. You're not dreaming. We're in the Reverie Hotel. In the real world. The Order's dream is over. <sighs> Even though it's been a day, I still break into a sweat when I think about it. Our trailblazing expedition almost ended in Panacone. I'm so jealous that you got a good night's sleep. I was traumatized and too scared to even close my eyes. I thought if I fell asleep, I'd never wake up again. The Stellaron was sealed while you were sleeping. The ordinary people in Panacone have no idea what happened. They just feel like something's missing from their memories. The family's official statement was like, The Charmony Festival was attacked by an unidentified Stellaron and came to a halt. After all, they can't just reveal the truth about the Order. Now, all the major lineages, except for the Oak family, are dealing with the aftermath. The family has invited the crew to the Radiant Feldspar as witnesses for an important meeting. Everyone's waiting for you, so hurry up and pack. We're leaving as soon as you're ready. <sighs> After all this craziness, nothing is better than staying safe in reality. It's a massive airship, and it's awesome! I heard it's never shown to the public. Only VIP guests of the family get to board it and enjoy the breathtaking views of Panacone. The Iris family sent us a bunch of souvenirs. Fruit baskets, plus this fancy button model. After you're back on your feet, you can enjoy them all. We are pretty much celebrities on the planet of festivities now, aren't we? The Stellaron was sealed while you were sleeping. The ordinary people in Panacone have no idea what happened. They just feel like something's missing from their memories. The family's official statement was like, The Charmony Festival was attacked by an unidentified Stellaron and came to a halt. After all, they can't just reveal the truth about the Order. Now, all the major lineages, except for the Oak family, are dealing with the aftermath. The family has invited the crew to the Radiant Feldspar as witnesses for an important meeting. Why the sudden interest in that? Well, I was dragged into this sweet dream. I felt a cold tentacle diving into my memories. But... Something else was there, so the tentacle suddenly disappeared. And then... I dreamed about stuffing my face with delicious food and going on a shopping spree. Sunday didn't seriously believe that was the life I wanted, right? Ugh, breaking free from that cheesy illusion was just a piece of cake. Yeah, let's go! We've got some time before we board the ship, so let's catch up with everyone at Dream Jolt Hostelry. How extravagant. Just like Epsilon. How was it? Did it live up to your dreamscape expectations? You already asked that when we first got here. Yeah, and you said no back then. But after all this madness, I'd say you've grown fond of it. Oh, just a heads up, you're still on the Bloodhound family's wanted list, so keep a low profile. And this time, it's Firefly in the picture, not
not Sam. That's got to be a whole new experience for you, right? Indeed. In Kafka's words, that's also a missing part of my life. Still, it'd be quite inconvenient if I can't move freely. Could you help me out, Silverwolf? I knew you'd say that. Don't worry. I've hacked all the systems and left no trace. Don't do anything that may draw attention, and don't talk with guards. They might recognize you. Keep these two points in mind, and you can go wherever you want, unbothered. <laughs> Thank you. No problem, Miss Samuel. <laughs> I love this fake name. Now that we're done here in Panacone, what will you do in your free time? I hear the Genius Society is here. How about we go stir up some excitement? Well, you know my script isn't over yet. I didn't bring you back to hear an answer like that. Don't worry. The script says that I'll experience three deaths but also receive an unforgettable reward on the planet of festivities. How will I know if I don't try? All possibilities exist until the outcome actually happens, right? You may not realize it, but you have a bad habit. Whenever you seem to be asking a question, you've already made up your mind, and no words will dissuade you. Anyway, Kafka asked me to pass on this message. If you see anything fabulous in Pentacony, get one for me too. Just swipe my card, you know the pin. <laughs> she didn't specify anything, but I guess she means a dress, coat, sunglasses, or something else. You know better about fashion than I do. Sure. I'll keep an eye out. There's tons of options at OT Mall. <gasps> Do you think she'll like trinkets, like uh, hair accessories or brooches? Uh, those sound more like something for young girls. Maybe you should keep them for yourself. Oh, by the way, Blade didn't explicitly say it, but I think he was trying to say something like, Temptation will show up again in Panacone. He's always so subtle with his words. Got it. He was just worried about me. Relax, Silverwolf. You know me. I won't do anything crazy. I just want to wander around and see more of the world for myself. <gasps> I want to buy some oat cake rolls. I've had a cake roll every day since I arrived in Penicone, from the first day to the last. But today, I'll buy two and give you one. And if you don't like them, I'll enjoy double the pleasure. Or I can bring one to Kafka, as she never refuses. Or maybe I'll give it to Blade. He'll appreciate it. That's not written in the script, right? But as you see, I have added new footnotes to my destiny. Welcome, Director Topaz. The family ambassadors are still inside making preparations, but the big boss hasn't arrived yet. It'll be a while before the conference starts, I'm afraid. Huh. Quite a spectacle. The family really knows how to make things look impressive. I thought they would choose a more formal and low-key location for the conference. I didn't expect them to go with a luxury airship. About this, Director. I've asked around. This airship, named uh, the Radiant Felspar, belongs to the Alfalfa family. This conference between the IPC and the family will have a direct impact on Penacone's future. Such an important event should have been held at it. <sighs> well, somewhere secretive in the moment of morning dew. The atmosphere here... It doesn't feel serious enough. 
Hmm. If I'm right, this conference is probably just a prelude. Whoever organized it wants to assess the IPC stance beforehand. This influential figure either has their own ambitions and wants to reach a preliminary agreement, or they plan to put pressure on us to make us back off. Ah, oh, your mind is always so sharp, Director Topaz. And when the big boss arrives, please remind her to be cautious and watch out for any traps. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder, but I don't think that will be necessary. When she's at the table, it's the others who need to be cautious. Just tell everyone on our team to stay focused on their tasks and not worry about the negotiations. Oh, got it. I'll do it right away. Oh, and uh, one more thing. Don't call Miss Jade Big Boss in front of her, or there will be serious consequences. I mean, really serious. Uh, uh, got it. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder, Director. and fell right here. Just completely face planted. The important figures have arrived yet. <sighs> Looks like the conference won't be starting for a while. Such a bustling place. I think I'll take a little walk around. Liking, huh? Oh, sorry. I'll treat you to a nice meal once we get back to reality. So many buttons. How many centuries would it take to press them all? 
didn't expect those pooches to actually recycle them all. Huh? What are these? <clears throat> For your safety, please stay away from those objects. For my safety? Are these buttons something dangerous? Not exactly. Lately, there's been a prankster in the sweet dream who's been handing out strange button devices to anyone he meets. According to those involved, he said something like, just press this button and all of Panacone will explode. Luckily, no one believed him. Still, the Bloodhound family collected these buttons just to be on the safe side. Where's that prankster? Haven't the hounds caught him yet? <laughs> yeah, that guy has some skills, I'll have to admit that. However, you know, the Bloodhound family won't give up. Whoever disrupts order in the dreamscape will face severe consequences. Anyway, the family will deal with these things. Please, kindly keep your distance. Greetings, madame. What can I do for you? Hello. Could you tell me more about the Radiant Feldsvar? I assume you are the ambassador of the IPC Strategic Investment Department. It's my honor to assist you. The Radiant Feldsvar is owned by Mr. Odie Alfalfa, head of the Alfalfa family. Mr. Alfalfa invested a significant amount in building this luxurious airship an Ember era ago, and it has been sailing across the 12 hours of the dreamscape ever since. Oh, so it's owned by old OG himself. No wonder the ship is so lavishly decorated. Indeed, Mr. Alfalfa has impeccable taste. Only the most prestigious guests are invited by the Alfalfa family to board this airship. Please allow me to continue my introduction. The Radiant Felspar had been cruising over the Sea of Dreams in Penacone for an entire Ember era. But its voyage was temporarily halted due to the recent reverberation. Reverberation? <laughs> Such a formal way of putting it. You're really downplaying the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> I apologize. Please continue. <laughs> Following the previous reverberation in the Sweet Dream, the Radiant Felspar had to suspend its voyage temporarily. Thankfully, the factors that disrupted the dreamscape have been resolved. However, due to, well, certain special reasons, the Charmony Festival originally scheduled at the Panacone Grand Theater had to be temporarily postponed. So, Mr. Alfalfa suggested relocating the Charmony Festival to the Radiant Felspar, taking this opportunity to announce the resumption of the airship's voyage. Ah, oh, well, that would meet the family's needs and also create momentum for Mr. Alfalfa himself. Quite fitting for a legendary tycoon like him. Thank you for explaining matters to me. Goodbye. Hello? The Talent Motivation Department? Again? Internal review? Will it ever end? Uh, I'm working on a major project. I don't have time to squabble with you guys. I, the way I handled the Urillo case was approved by senior management, and all of the project logs and calls are complete. Can't you check on them yourselves? I just don't understand. Why are you so fixated on this minor case and constantly escalating it? I... Seriously, what's your purpose? Sounds exhausting. Why not just hang up? In my opinion, you handled that project quite well. A little ball of ice in exchange for the astral expenses good favor. That's not a bad deal for the department. <laughs> it's been a while, little Yelena. I've been looking forward to working with you.
Never imagined this day would come so soon. Is there trouble? You can tell me anything. Just like old times. Ah, it's been a while, Madam Jade. I'm honored to have the opportunity to work with you. You're still so formal, aren't you? Forget about the hierarchy and treat me as your equal. No need for unnecessary titles like Madam. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it might take some time to get used to that. After all, you are a senior. Well, now that we're both members of the Ten Stone Hearts, I need you to be at your best. Especially since the upcoming negotiations leave no room for error. As sharp as you are, I'm sure you've figured out the true purpose of this conference, right? I believe old Oti has taken it upon himself to test our limits before the official negotiations between the IPC and Panacone. That's true, and it works in our favor. Do you know why? If we can reach some sort of agreement with old Oti beforehand, and gauge our opponent's boundaries, our future negotiations will go much more smoothly. That's the obvious benefit. Exactly. And the hidden benefit is that, as the head of the Alfalfa family, his action suggests that the five lineages might not be as united as the Odes of Harmony would suggest. As long as the influence of Harmony hasn't completely permeated their core, personal desires will always have their way. Thankfully, influential figures in Panacone haven't entirely suppressed their own desires. It's similar to the power struggles within the IPC. The supposed all-for-one philosophy shared by the five lineages. It's just a slogan now that the Dream Master has gone. After the downfall of the Oak family, Old Oti's faction became the dominant force in Panacone. Even if we consider only the succession order, he is the longest serving and most senior among all the family heads. Yes, that's exactly why we need to handle the conference following an agreed upon strategy. It's like playing a game of chess, where every move needs to be carefully thought out. Absolutely. The three steps of negotiation. Listen, test, and strike. That's what you taught me. Pretty clear. Although, you seem to have changed the order in the Yarilo case. <laughs> that was based on my personal experience. I, I apologize for interrupting your conversation, but the family head is ready to meet the ambassadors from the Strategic Investment Department. Time to get to work. Let's prepare ourselves and meet that esteemed supporting actor. Remember, our goal is to create an opportunity for the IPC to enter Panacone. Aventurine has already made a small opening, and you and I, we're going to tear it wide open. <laughs> Pays off. <laughs> Welcome aboard my ship, the Radiant Feldspar, smart and charming ladies. Please, have a seat. Let's have a pleasant conversation.
<laughs> Welcome aboard, my dear ladies. Forgive me for any lack of attentiveness that might have led to a lengthy wait outside. No problem at all, Mr. Alfalfa. It's my honor to meet you in person. You may not be aware, but the book Odi Alfalfa, the biography, is a must-read for all Strategic Investment Department employees. After all, to many, you are the legendary figure who single-handedly built the Panacone economy. <laughs> I expected no less from the Ten Stonehearts from the Strategic Investment Department. You're definitely skilled in the art of conversation. I always enjoy talking to smart people because we don't have to beat around the bush. We can just get straight to the point instead. Since I invited you IPC ambassadors on board, I'm sure you've figured out the topic I'd like to discuss, yes? The future of Panacone, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Precisely. Those few words represent a terribly complicated situation indeed. Let's take that golden-haired guy who's not showing up, for example. He put in great effort and almost got himself killed. But what was it all for? Wasn't it eventually to create an opportunity for you IPC to regain control of the precious Astana? <laughs> The wisdom and experience you've accumulated over ten Amber Eras are truly impressive. Let's assume your assumptions are correct, Mr. Alfalfa. How would you respond to the IPC's actions? I appreciate your composure, Miss Jade. You must have witnessed much in your worldly experiences. However, perhaps you don't know much about Penacony. <laughs> Old Oti won't sit idly by when faced with a greedy wolf. <laughs> Please, go ahead. I'm all ears. <laughs> then I'll be straightforward. I requested this meeting before the official conference to dissuade the Strategic Investment Department from trying to lay a finger on Panacone. If you back off now, you can make a smooth exit and prevent the IPC from losing face during more important negotiations. One of our P-45 executives was attacked and nearly killed in the dreamscape. The IPC can't simply ignore this incident. Moreover, considering the turbulence during the Charmony Festival, Panacone's credibility has taken a hit in the public's eyes. Despite your determined attitude, the issues plaguing Panacone are real, are they not? You use the term real, Miss Topaz, but let's not forget that this is the realm of dreams. If you want to succeed here, you need ambition and unconventional thinking. Curious about how I plan to respond to the IPC? Well, I don't mind sharing. My actions will help Panacone take a significant step forward by self-listing and going public. Going public? If I'm not mistaken, you want to bypass the IPC and go public on a universal scale. Precisely. Instead of watching the IPC gnaw away at Panacone, I'd prefer to open the doors of the sweet dream to the entire universe. Starting today, anyone in the cosmos can become a shareholder of the land of the dreams. This is the path of harmony I'll choose. <laughs> This reform should have been implemented earlier, but unfortunately, the Oak family were a bunch of blockheads blinded by order. <laughs> Their level of intellectual flexibility doesn't even come close to an old fellow like me. 
Thanks to the little um, reverberation earlier, the biggest obstacle between me and my reforms has been eliminated. <laughs> The Alfalfa family will publicize the financial results of Sweet Dream Paradise, so that the entire universe can see that, despite the catastrophe, Panacone still holds immense potential and opportunities, and that the family remains confident in its future. Hmm. Crisis and opportunity are two sides of the same coin. So, you've been waiting for the right moment for Panacone to regain the spotlight. And if Panacone should seize this opportunity to overcome adversity, even if the IPC tries to intervene, every move we make will be scrutinized by trillions of people. <laughs> now I'm convinced that you've indeed familiarized yourself with my biography, Miss Jade. So... About your next move, please consider it carefully. Indeed. We need some time to digest such a wealth of information. I suggest we conclude the first half of our conference, Mr. Alfalfa. Please allow Topaz and me to confer privately for a few moments, and to respond on behalf of the IPC later. <laughs> of course! Take your time, dear ladies. The Alfalfa family had a meeting with the IPC? I got this information from a message sent by that IPC ambassador. He said it was to return the favor. It's not hard to imagine. Panacone today is pretty much like the frontier prison it once was, with external forces casting greedy eyes and the undercurrent of order lurking within. Instead of falling into a situation where they are plagued by both external and internal threats, Panacone would rather take a step back and invite the IPC to negotiate at the table, ostensibly to cooperate, but in reality, to secure more opportunities for their own survival. Well, no wonder they sought the mediation from the Astral Express. In your opinion, who should we stand behind? I don't think the followers of the Harmony are completely innocent victims in all of this. For reasons unknown, they have a strong desire to smooth things over, which leads to speculation about their motives. If either the family or IPC were to assume full control of Panacone, it would return to its previous illusory dream of hedonism, and the efforts of those previous nameless would once again go to waste. There you are. Did you rest well? I didn't disturb you since you were in a deep sleep. Ah, she went to negotiate with the family as a representative of the crew. She'll contact us once her arrangements are ready. Hmm. After Anna's dream was shattered, the family branch from the Montour system soon arrived and swiftly took control of the situation. Most members of the Oak family fell unconscious, but fortunately their lives were not in danger. <sighs> The mastermind behind the plans was confirmed to be Gopher Wood, the previous Dream Master. But by the time we arrived, he was dead already. He'll face a trial. As for further details, the family would rather not disclose them. Ultimately, the public perceived the incident as an attack by evil forces targeting the Charmony Festival. They believe the family failed to safeguard the sweet dream, significantly eroding their credibility in the process. While quite different from the truth, the 
This appears to be the outcome with the least impact. After all, you don't know who's awake and who's pretending to be asleep. Well, they'll open their eyes in the face of danger. Once the danger subsides, they'll embrace the sweet dream again. Here's a toast with three glasses of glory of the trailblaze to all of you. Yeah, it's good to see you all again. Although we might be saying goodbye again after this reunion. But when will the Astral Express leave Fenagoni? We'll stay a bit longer, but not too long. So, this is our final meeting then? If this is a farewell, then it seems to be missing something. Music? Atmosphere? Ah, maybe a special drink to honor those who are not here. Let's see, the mixed drink should be solemn, dignified, and unique. As we'll use it to pay respect to those fallen heroes. To the nameless resting in peace. And to Gallagher. Ready to mix your drink? I'm not sure. I haven't seen him since our last meeting at the lounge. Come to think of it, he always did come and go quietly. We used to discuss everything here. But every time he'd leave, I'd realize that I didn't know him at all. Such is the mystery that is Gallagher. I have a hunch. Perhaps he's already fulfilled his wishes and won't be coming back. Before we start, uh, would you like to talk to your friends? We have plenty of time. It's rare for all passengers to leave the Express together during a trailblazing expedition. But for Panacone, it seems most appropriate. Given the Conductor's presence, there's no need to worry about it. However, it's crucial that we soon return to inform Pom Pom about uh, the Nameless. My dream. The Express stopped at many places, and passengers came and went. However, the five of us were always present, and the journey seemed never ending. <sighs> Perhaps this could be a deep seated desire inside me, and uh, upon realizing this, I, uh, I knew it wasn't real. No related records exist in the databank, but I have a theory. The hidden dangers of the Order have always been within the Harmony, and this issue existed within the family from the very beginning. However, now that more powers in the universe are aware of this secret, the situation in the cosmos will become more complicated. Like I said, we'll go and see. Once we've packed everything, we should head to our next destination. This trailblazing expedition has been thrilling and memorable. Hopefully we've all gained insights about ideals, paranoia, clarity, and dreams from the experiences we've had. One bird longs for the earth, and the other longs for the sky. Even if Robin had to stop her brother with her own hands, she won't give up on him. However, facing punishment from the Harmony is inevitable. He will face a trial. As for further details, the family would rather not disclose them.
Since the family took up residence in Fanaconi, the Order has been hiding in plain sight under the guise of the Oak family, using the Stellaron's power to strengthen their hold on the Sweet Dream, which eventually resulted in disaster. That's the claim the family makes. Whether they were truly unaware of all this is a delicate matter. Venturine's efforts finally earned the IPC a seat at the table. As a result, a more senior representative arrived in Panacone and initiated negotiations with the family. As far as the Astral Express is concerned, the IPC will make for an invaluable ally during the negotiations to prevent Panacone returning to its former ways. Well, it was somewhat Surprising. In that dream, I returned to my homeworld and reunited with my long-lost friends. And, for some reason, Acheron resurfaced in my mind. When I realized that her conclusion was not preserved in memories, I became aware of the bitter truth. The conclusion of a journey can often be sorrowful. All we can do is to try to make sure it ends on a happy note. Ready to mix your drink? Before we start, uh, would you like to talk to your friends? All right, as you wish. Huh, I think I have an idea about what drink to make. Would you like it bitter or sweet? It's up to you. Choose the flavor that suits you best at this moment. Here's Bitter Dreams, the least popular drink in this bar. It's bitter and sour, <laughs> just like the harsh realities of life. Not a bad choice. Let's start mixing. Words always fall short. If you want to bring closure to past events at this lounge, there's no better way than mixing a drink. Blend all your memories and emotions together and stir them well. Through the filter of time, what remains in the glass is something to savor. Well, it's done. Here's to the nameless resting in peace and to my friend Gallagher. Death is a bitter truth, but what you did will be remembered by history. We're not accepted by the outside world, so we've gathered here. And one day, our souls will return to the same place. Cheers.
are you leaving? Well, then take this with you. I've mixed more of this last special drink for you. <sighs> the past shouldn't be forgotten. So I hope it brings back the flavors of Panacone. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure it'll leave a lasting impression. <laughs> if you happen to run into Gallagher, make sure he has a sip too. I know his tastes, and he'll be thrilled. Then, I guess you won't be seeing him. All right, enough with the heavy stuff. You guys have important things to take care of, so let's not dwell on things. Whether it's the Astral Express or Panacone, there's still a long journey ahead. So let's lift our spirits, guys, and embark towards our tomorrows. <sighs> Old Oti is a tricky opponent. I didn't expect him to take the risky step of going public at such a critical moment for Panacone. Indeed. He's definitely bold. It's that kind of boldness that made him the Odi Alfalfa he is today. Still, the outcome is uncertain. Shouting loud doesn't necessarily carry any weight. What about the phone call I asked you to make, Topaz? Ah, they agreed. But it'll take some time before they arrive. Just as it should be. The sweet dew should be served after the bitter poison. <laughs> Looks like we'll be skipping the exchanging apples step this time around. <laughs> now that we're dealing with a greedy merchant, a simple apple wouldn't make a difference. Well, I guess I included myself in that remark too. Now I'm a bit curious, Topaz. Do you think Panacone is a quality asset? Hmm, yes. Despite its recent calamity, Panacone remains a top quality asset within the cosmos. With, uh, good credit, lucrative potential, and, uh, promising prospects. Well, that's obvious. But what I truly wanted to know is... This project is obviously too bland for your taste. Isn't it? <laughs> That's true. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for Venturine. But despite that, you trust him. You even entrusted him with a cornerstone. Something as precious as life itself to finish this gamble. Uh, are you not in the same boat, Miss Jade? Without us playing along, your Jade Stone wouldn't have made it across the border so easily, allowing you to see all desires that flow through dreams to gain a bargaining chip in negotiations. <laughs> That's why I'm willing to stake my Topaz Stone to cover for you. <laughs> it's like one big elaborate game of chess. Once that kid sets his mind to something, nothing can stop him. Not even fate. Well, at least he's still alive, and that's the best outcome. <laughs> Looks like uh, we've strayed off topic, Miss Jade. Should we discuss our next steps? No need. I'll go it alone. Meanwhile, you can go greet our honored guest and wait for my message. Okay. Is that Robin? She's also here on the Radiant Felt's bar.
not exactly eye-catching. Greetings, Miss Robin. I didn't expect to meet you here. Miss Jade? Greetings. The opening ceremony for the Charmony Festival has been moved to the Radiant Feldspar, so I'm here making some preparations. How about you? Have you spoken with Mr. Alfalfa? I'm actually on my way to meet him right now. Do you know him well, Miss Robin? Unfortunately, I've never met him. I've only heard a few comments from the former head of the Oak family. Mr. Alfalfa is respectable when it comes to business. But in other respects, I can't say the same. Hmm. Where do you think the future of the planet of festivities is headed? I believe the sweet dream will see its rebirth. Just like the Radiant Feldspar resumed its voyage. The Harmony needs a new direction. Only by bidding farewell to the past, can we actually sail into the future. There are no permanent allies or everlasting enemies. So let's both take what we need from this deal. Naturally. I'm looking forward to your performance. See you at the festival. See you later, Miss Jade. Thank you for your patience, Mr. Alfalfa. Let's continue our discussion. <laughs> Figured out something already, Miss Jade? Hmm. But where is Miss Topaz? Topaz has something else to take care of. You'll be seeing her later. Talks can still continue between the two of us. Is it just me, Miss? Your tone sounds very different now. I need to set a good example for my junior. It's not a good habit to be too loose-lipped during negotiations, right? Now we can speak frankly and openly. Do you believe what I said, Odi? You're not the only merchant who has seen the changes in the cosmic market over the past ten Amber Eras. Interesting. <laughs> now that's interesting. Good. It's good to be straightforward. Openness and transparency are my things. 
So, tell me, what's your next move? Unfortunately, I'd like to speak the harsh truth before laying out my plan. <laughs> Let's cut to the chase. First, your plan won't work. Penacony has no way of sidestepping the IPC and going public. Second, you can't stop the IPC from entering Penacony. We've got all the time and connections in the world to find a way in. We'll keep tearing down and rebuilding this place until the Asdana system gets used to the IPC's ways again. Now, I'm repeating your words exactly. If you don't want to be a laughingstock and have everyone gunning for you at the official conference, you'd better drop your little pie-in-the-sky plan. Oh, interesting. Indeed. You surely have a way with words. Now, I'm curious to know what you have up your sleeve. Mr. Alfalfa, let's not forget that the IPC controls the biggest interstellar publicity platform. More than half the news networks in the universe take their orders from us. The moment news spreads about Penacony going public, trillions of customers will immediately receive a message like this. The family's protection for Penacony has expired. Any mishaps in the dreamscape could result in permanent brain death. Care to guess how many ways we have to turn alfalfa credits into worthless junk within a measly 24 system hours? <laughs> With the entire cosmos keeping a close eye on Penacony, I assure you, it won't be too hard. You really think you can pull that off? Even from Pier Point, as distant as it may be, I'm more than capable of keeping you on a tight leash. However, if you agree to give up that half-baked plan to go public, the IPC will assure you that we'll never jeopardize the interests of the family heads under your leadership. After all, we also need allies here in Asdana. The IPC can assist Penacony with financing, starting by acquiring 30% equity shares. With our financial support, stabilizing and rebuilding Penacony will be a piece of cake. 30% equity, you say? Who can guarantee you won't want more in the future? <laughs> That's the brilliant part of it all. The answer is simple. No one. There are no guarantees. It all hinges on self-awareness and mutual respect. However, the board of directors will consider the interests of the family heads to some extent. You're a smart merchant, old Odie. Isn't the whole purpose of this elaborate game to showcase your business acumen and seek more benefits for the family? It benefits us if we both take a step back. And if that's not enough for you, I'm pretty sure that another goal of making Penacony go public is to expand the influence of the Planet of Festivities and attract more customers. I understand your concern, and I have a solution for that, too. Fine. Now I see your sincerity. As the head of the Alfalfa family, I don't think I have any reason to refuse your offer. However, as their chosen one, I still need one final answer. Go ahead. I'm listening. When I was a child, I heard the adults recite the tale of the ancient Amberera. About the ascension of Shipe, the Harmony, and the downfall of Enna, the Order. The Order and the Preservation used to be close in ancient times. So, why does the IPC, as a follower of the Amber Lord, seek collaboration with the family instead of aligning with the Order? The answer is simpler than you think. It's all about credits. Everyone's favorite thing and the universally recognized currency among the stars. 
the IPC has the power to perpetually ensure their value. With each new world integrated into the credit system, the IPC adds another building block to its cause. Eventually, all exchanges, capital, and businesses will operate within a unified monetary system. By then, all planetary developments will be recorded in accounts with well-defined values and the ability for exchange and circulation. And the heart of everything will be Klepoth's credit. Ah, oh. and then the IPC will be able to exert influence over everything. Our intention is to establish enduring preservation, so I'm sure you can understand. This universe doesn't need two types of order. Hmm. <laughs> well said. Now you've convinced me. All right. Tell me your solution. Let's see if we're thinking the same thing. Then let's continue our conversation. Please, Topaz. Invite Sweet Dew to join us at the table. Thank you for your presence, Miss Himeko. Please allow me to introduce her to you, Mr. Alfalfa. This is Miss Himeko from the Astral Express, one of the future shareholders of Penacony. I've heard so much about you, Mr. Alfalfa. It's an honor to meet you as representative of the Astral Express. <laughs> this stunning lady is the navigator of the Astral Express? It's a pleasure to meet you. I believe everyone here is familiar with the general contents of the proposal. After this round of financing, the IPC is expected to hold 30% of Penacony's shares. Then, the IPC will transfer 5% of that stake to the Astral Express and recommend Miss Himeko as an independent director to honor the sacrifices and contributions made by the former Nameless to the Land of the Dreams. While this decision isn't finalized yet, we are honored that everyone here recognizes the way of the Trailblaze. While the Nameless didn't embark on their journeys for fame or fortune, if this is the wish of both the family and the IPC, I will represent the Astral Express and fulfill my duty as a member of the Board of Directors. The entire crew has agreed to assist in the reconstruction of Penacony. Beyond that, in our future travels, we are committed to bringing the beautiful dreams of the Planet of Festivities to more worlds. Of course, all cooperation is based on one premise. The path of harmony in Penacony must not be distorted again, and such a tragedy must never recur. Old OT is in agreement, so the issue is settled, I presume. What about the remaining family heads? They will soon realize the situation. When Old OT answered the last question, he represented more than just the Alfalfa family. 
When should we schedule the formal negotiations? I'll handle the arrangements. It's all up to you. I'll step back and let you handle the negotiations and take over. I won't be involved. Uh, but Miss Jade, this is... Aventurine initiated this case, and you were his project partner. If that kid hadn't overplayed his hand, I wouldn't have been pushed to the forefront. I came here today to help you sort out the toughest issue. I trust you'll be able to wrap things up quite nicely, little Yelena. Of course, there won't be any problems. And please, give Diamond my assurance. Don't worry. Diamond has always trusted us. I'll put in a good word for you, and you'll have your P-45 position back in no time. Radiant Feldspar. What a fantastic ship. Now that my business is done, it's time for me to indulge in my own little hobby. Ah, you want to open a Bon and Jade Exchange branch on this ship too? Opportunities like this don't come around often. Just look at the guests on this ship. They're surely holding a wealth of valuable treasures. Well, <laughs> I'll take my leave. A pawn shop can't run without a boss. See you around, Topaz. I have one more question for you, Miss Jade. Hmm? Go ahead. That dose of bitter poison. I'm curious as to how you found this information. I didn't find the information. It came to me. It was from... A lady concerned with the future of the Harmony. In return, I've agreed to help her with something. But that's for later. We can deal with it after we leave Panacone. You see, that's what investment is all about. The seeds of opportunity are already sown. They only need a little bit of nourishment to take root. And then after, all we need to do is wait patiently. Like right now, for example. It's just about time my final guest boarded the ship. Sneaking in was way easier than I thought. The family's security is as lax as ever. So, this is the Radiant Feldspar. <laughs> so luxurious. A pawn shop that grants wishes. Is there really a place like that on the ship? I'll find out for myself if the rumors are true or not. Is that... her? Huh. Vanished in the blink of an eye. So the Astral Express is here too. By the way, there's one more thing. Mr. Alfalfa and I discussed it. 
I'll present a gift to the Astral Express on behalf of the family as a token of gratitude for the Nameless's contributions to Pentacony. Please help me with the necessary arrangements. Right away, Miss Robin. Can I ask you something? Oh, greetings, miss. Is there anything I can help you with? Do you know how to get to the pawn shop? Pawn shop? Ah, you must be talking about Lady Bonajade's place, right? I heard she offers uh, special services there. I've marked the pawn shop's location on your device. Please feel free to check it out. Lady Bonajade. I think I've heard that name somewhere before. Was it from Silverwolf? Come to think of it, she disappeared after mentioning that she was going to meet with the Genius Society. Hmm. I wonder how things turned out for her. Welcome to Bona Jade Exchange, Radiant Feldspar Branch. How should I address you, dear lady? Just call me Samuel. Samuel, nice name. So what do you need, Miss Samuel? And what are you willing to give up in return? I want to keep on living. And for that, I'm willing to give up everything I have. Everything you have. That's right. Everything. Miss Samuel, I think you'd best turn around. It seems you're not quite familiar with the term pawn. What do you mean? I mean it literally. I sense your burning desire to live, but unfortunately, you don't have anything of equal value to offer. <laughs> Okay, a pawn shop that grants wishes. <laughs> I see, it's just a marketing gimmick. Well, that's quite a harsh accusation. I understand you may not fully comprehend what I mean, but don't worry, I'll help you understand. Go and talk to these people. They're all customers of my pawn shop. See for yourself if their wishes have come true. Once you've done that, Come back to me. I'll help you understand the true meaning of Pawn, and make you realize what you're missing. That Lady Bonajade feels more like a money lender rather than the owner of a pawn shop. Well, I've got nothing better to do anyway. I'll do as she says and see what happens.
<laughs> you stupid little girl. Coming back to lose more money, huh? Enough talk. Let's get started. This will be our final game. I'm betting my entire fortune. Oh, a big talker, huh? <laughs> All right. Let's see what you've got. This can't be! You lost to me ten times in a row. How could I possibly lose to you at such a crucial moment? It's true! Lady Bonna Jade has truly blessed me! <laughs> Finally! My luck has turned for the better! Great new era for Stacy, the master gambler, has arrived! <laughs> prepared a gift for you, Dorothy. Check this out. Whoa! What a beautiful necklace! Is it made of cymophane? It's stunning. How did you know I love jewelry made of cymophane? It has the same purple hue as the necklace my dad gave my mom. I've never told anyone about it. How did you find out, Del? So... So, will, will you go out with me? <sighs> I, I will. R really? I mean, really? I never said yes before because I thought you had no idea what I liked. But this gift made me realize you were actually paying attention all along, trying to learn everything about me. So yes, I will. W wonderful! My my wish has actually come true. So shall we go, Dorothy? Let's go outside and enjoy the stunning views of the twelve hours. Yeah, let's go. Did you see that? The gray-haired one outside. <laughs> Don't look around, just focus on your drink. Seriously, they look like a total lunatic. Is that... her?
chirp chirp origami bird hey little birdie come on oh, come down already everyone's staring at you no it's not the best time to do that sorry I'll catch up with you later No, it's not the best time. Sorry. I'll catch up with you. Yeah, you heard right. I've got him. He's been hiding at the moment of Sol and Pinnacone, using a fake identity. And he even poses as a professor at Paperfold Academy. I've made a deal with the family. I'll leave the extradition-related paperwork to you. How to find him? Well, let's just say I had some help from an influential figure. Don't ask for the details. 22 years. Yeah. 22 years of chasing this guy all over the cosmos. You know, never thought it'd end up like this. Right here. I'm gonna hang up for now, partner. I need to raise a glass to myself. Their wishes actually did come true. <laughs> but... So you're back, Miss Samuel. Yeah. I found those people. And it seems their wishes did come true after visiting the Bonajade Exchange. But I'm not sure what you want me to see. They all seem to be living... fulfilled lives. Not so fast. This step was just to show you that the Bonajade Exchange is genuine. That I had the power to grant their wishes. And now, I'll tell you the price they paid. Del was from a wealthy family. He was head over heels for Dorothy, and wanted to win her heart. So he made a deal with me. He put up his entire fortune in exchange for a gift that would impress Dorothy. It was a piece of cake for me, thanks to my IPC connections. However... Del will soon find himself evicted from the dreamscape, because he can't afford his room. Whether he can bounce back from poverty, well, that depends on him. Let's just hope that Necklace will keep their relationship from crumbling. Then there's Stacy, a lady with a gambling addiction. She wanted some serious luck, but she had nothing to offer, so I took something else instead. I took away all her close relationships. From the moment she stepped out of the Bonajade Exchange, every casino in the cosmos would remember her name. But her parents and siblings would sever ties with her, and it would be impossible for Stacy to make any real friends again. She will accrue a vast wealth due to her good luck, but she'll never be able to use it for the people who truly matter to her. As for Detective Walker, he spent two decades chasing down a wanted criminal for some heinous crime. But he never caught the guy. In his desperation, he came to me. He offered his own memory system as collateral. In due time, his memories as a detective will be erased, and he will completely forget his own identity and all the sacrifices he has made. Interesting, don't you think? I fulfill people's desires and grant them favors, and soon they come back to me with even greater desires. 
When people see others' desires get fulfilled, they develop their own desires. It seems like an endless cycle, but it does have a goal. In the end, I will get what I desire from this whirlpool. And patience happens to be one of my greatest strengths. So now, do you understand what you must give up, Miss Samuel? Or should I address you as... AR-26710, a remnant of Glamoth's Iron Cavalry. Hmm. I'm not surprised. You are much calmer than I expected. <laughs> Entropy loss syndrome. Truly an unjust misfortune, isn't it? The higher-ups in Glamoth implemented such a failsafe within the genes of their warriors, just to make sure the Republic's most powerful weapons wouldn't fall into the wrong hands. As for the price, those Iron Cavalries weren't exactly seen as regular, independent humans, so there wasn't really a price to be paid. However, you are different. You're now a Stellaron Hunter, a living being named Firefly. Naturally, you want to continue your existence, but with the firmament front gone, the people who know the secret and can cure the disease are nowhere to be found. Are you suggesting that the IPC has a remedy? Well, there might be a silver lining. That's all I can say for now. I see. It's no wonder you said I can't provide anything of equal value. Because nothing I own holds any meaning. So... You're going to ask me to personally restrain my partners to ensure my own survival? Unfortunately, that's not quite the case. Partners. A nice way to put it. Now I'm even more curious about the Stellaron Hunters. Each of you has your own identity and a special bond with each other. It's strong and intimate, and yet it allows for independence. Just as the Ten Stonehearts follow Diamond, you follow your own leader. I wonder what they are like, and if all Stellaron Hunters are like you. Traveling on the path of finality, but struggling against your destiny. Attempting to move in the opposite direction. I really hope that one day, all of you will come and visit my pawn shop. I'll be waiting patiently for that day. Can I see this as an invitation? From Diamond to the Stellaron Hunters while keeping the IPC in the dark? Consider it more of a personal offer from myself. It doesn't represent the IPC or the Strategic Investment Department. The Stellaron Hunters have interacted with the IPC, but not the Ten Stonehearts. Our paths have never crossed. As for your offer, I can pass it along to my partners. But I have a question. You know who I am. And you must know that my partner is keeping an eye on this room. If she wanted to, she could let the entirety of Pierpoint know about it within a few mere seconds. What drives you to take such a risk? And extend this invitation on behalf of Diamond? Even if it could lead to your downfall? Simply put... You and I are the same. However, unlike you Stellaron Hunters or the Astral Express, we band together merely to obtain what we want. Each of us has our own past and destined ends, and on this journey, we have been invited by Diamond to join him. This journey could be either brief or long, as each of us carries a void in our hearts that can only be filled from the outside. So, Diamond made us a promise. 
to divide the power of the Emanator of Preservation into ten pieces, and give each of us a cornerstone to fill that void. Mortal flesh is fragile, yet my heart is unyielding like the monolith. For without this resolve, the way of preservation would fade into oblivion. So, you understand? This pledge goes beyond a mere oath. It's our collateral in exchange for opportunities, wealth, survival, and a future. And whatever we gain from it will fortify the Stonehearts in return, allowing us to achieve the great cause of the preservation when the war among the Eons eventually comes. <laughs> I understand. Take your time, child. You don't need to give me an immediate answer. Like I said, patience is one of my greatest strengths. If fate turns that page, our paths will cross again. It's a shame, though, that this pawn shop can't give me what I desire. My last attempt in Penacony. <laughs> well, it ends with hope. Lady Bonajade? I've come to deliver the collaterals promised. Turns out, the meeting to decide the future of Penacony went much smoother than expected. With little debate. The Charmony Festival's opening ceremony is starting soon. I should head down and take a look. This airship has quite a few treasures. A bountiful harvest. <laughs>